What Das Studio sends over the bridge isn't always that helpful. I mean, aside from the fact that this Genesis figure is quite a low resolution mesh, and I know Rashid Carter's explained there's a workaround for this, I'm just going to look at dealing with the initial problems of a figure bridged over from Das Studio. Um, I might get around to exporting later, but I've not really had time to investigate that. And there's still enough things to go at, just sorting out the basics. Now, as you've probably noticed, uh, Vicky's looking a bit shiny, uh, a bit impractically shiny for a person. And that is what we're going to look at correcting, is trying to sort out some reasonable looking skin. Now, to get the best results with skin, you really need subsurface scattering which you can do in Bryce sort of but it's very time consuming and it does require you to produce some kind of absorber to put inside the body to represent the denser layers of flesh that the light gets trapped in so it only comes through the thinner areas like the ear or the nostril but that would be even more time consuming than this is already going to be and this is already going to be quite time consuming so and let's assess what we've got in this scene. This default lighting setup from Bryce. We've got a figure bridged over from Dow Studio. We've got these blocks, which uh, were made by Rashad Carter and the additional primitives. And we have our lighting setup that's interacting with these objects. And the reason I mentioned that is because here, the ambient color is interacting with the objects already. So if I quickly re-render this, you can now see that she's turned a bit red. So we know that the materials have got ambient in them, and these blocks have changed colour. And that could be a problem, because if we're not aware of that, this is introducing a light pollution into our render when we want a very high quality output. So we're going to modify the materials so they haven't got the ambient in them. So I'll start with the blocks and sort these blocks out. So they are you know, on the default, so I'll give them a different uh, as as assignation with their families is that assignation assignment okay right I'll give them a different assignment and modify the materials altogether and turn off the ambient value in the material channel so that's just set them down so that now you can see immediately they're not interacting with the global ambient color the uh, the model is the hair doesn't appear to be and the clothes don't appear to be so that's good it's going to have to change all these skin textures anyway. I've made sure that she's got her mouth shut and her eyes closed. The reason for that is, if she had her mouth open and her eyes open, then there would be even more things to modify the textures on. But since we're just concentrating on skin, I thought it would simplify matters. Now, there are different maps. I see if I select her leg here and look in the material. This is uh, Tori Limsy. So Tori is... Uh, is a sort of a version of Vic. I'm not really sure I understand how it works. I think 3D Delight made Tori and V5 were made by Daz and Genesis part of Daz. I don't know. But anyway, it, we just really need to concern ourselves with the name of the texture component. Now if we look in the texture source editor for this, we've got our limbs here and then we've got this very light grey setting which is going to drive some of the channels but in here we can see there's a dark grey one so what's the difference between these two well I've loaded them up and have a look in PaintShop Pro and it appears that these would be more appropriate for bump maps but they aren't applied in the appropriate channel this is so that's another consideration uh, and these are the things obviously belong to the eyes and the eyelashes and things like that and the clothing but we're concerning ourselves with the skin this is the hair okay and that's the inside of the mouth but the skin Obviously, if she's got a mouth open, then you have to look at this one. But the same theory applies, and since the skin's the largest area, I'll look at that. So we've got our limbs, we've got our torso, and we've got our head. Now, if I look here at the torso, we've got the torso applied. And if we look here at the face, and that includes the lips, we've got the head applied. So what we need to do, first of all, to make life easy, is assign families to the things with the different textures on. So if I go for the head, and I'll just make it this um, olive green colour, switch view, and I'll see if I can find the lips in here. 
so here's a lip and uh, nostrils and then I'll set that to this family then for the torso um, uh, that also applies to the hips the neck and the back of the head then I'll change that to this bluey colour and then the arms so we've got all the arms find it in here the hands the nails though they might want to be split off the leg the feet and the toenail I'll assign to this sort of uh, what's that a light teal turquoise right so now I've separated them into the different families so I'll just give this family a name so I could call that uh, face just so I can find it again torso and this one here we uh, limbs so that's our first step anything else that uh, like the, the nipples for example uh, they're not visible anyway they're behind a bikini but if they were then you'd have to just uh, have a look what maps applied to them so there we go let's find out what maps are there right okay so that's on the torso one so if we need to take account of that we apply it to the appropriate family in inside the head like I say there's the other features we've got here so uh, I didn't go as far as the esophagus but there's uh, the throat area the mouth the teeth the components of the eye then They'd all, you have to look at the material that's applied to them, some of them not appropriate, and determine what they should be. But uh, yeah, there's going to be enough to do as it is. So I'll deal with the largest skin area, so on the torso here, and look at the material settings. And then what we'll do is we'll transfer this across to other things. So uh, the reflection is an obvious one. We don't want that much reflection, but we might want some reflection. Uh, I'll leave the specular this uh, blue colour ambient we don't want so I'll just set that to black turn the ambience off uh, specularity I'll set that at 40 bumps going to be a problem we'll start with setting that at 20 anisotropy 20 so got a, a reasonable distribution now the specular halo to create a diffuse reflection of the skin we can use blurred reflection and the amount of blurring if I hold the alt key down I can bring this up is determined by this luminance value here so I'm going to set that up quite high and that will create a larger specular spot there but it will also mean that when you use blurred reflection it will spread the reflection so you won't see a sharp image of the backdrop we'll use HDRI image for the backdrop uh, now let's have a look at the bump problems right as I said a short while ago that might be an appropriate bump map so if I select that and select copy there and then go back to that one and select paste then I can put that in that channel so that now gives me my bump from here so what we need to do is see how that looks on the model now so it's changed the appearance bit, it's still looking a bit shiny but at the moment I'm just concerning myself with the bump so I'll zoom in on her leg and see how the bump looks now there is a problem here because uh, the channel is only an 8-bit channel you, uh, you can see that the, there's a, like a pixelization effect on the skin and that the coarseness of the map is not sufficient to give us a nice skin texture so what I'm going to do is go into the material lab and use three channels here so hold the control key down and click on the third channel the C channel and I'm going to use this as a mixing channel so to create a mixer the 50-50 mixer for example I've got one ready made but if you have a look in here all it's comprised of is this sign function so and there's nothing in the noise channel nothing nothing in the phase channel nothing the final combination set to none and it's only this sign so if you if you had none there before and you selected sign and it was in its default state to get it to be a 50 50 mix 
to set it to a flat line with this left component here and this means that the alpha output will mix this first channel with this second channel so you can already see there's more bump visible in this and so uh, I'm going to start from a known texture so I'm going to the basic and choose basic spots for example and then change this to something like uh, random not random discrete uh, let's say um, value oh there you go something a bit bumpy I've got gradient there no gradient where was I oh yes a weird gradient no that's a bit strange so something a bit bumpy that might be a bit like skin make it 3d so it's bumpy in all directions turn the frequency up and then just have the bump output and I'm going to reset this to none and I'll just check the final combination to make sure there's no phase in that so that's quite a strong bump pattern and uh, it's probably going to overwhelm the bump coming from the texture here on this component which is a little bit inconvenient so there's two ways of sorting that problem out we can either adjust the distribution in this by modifying the position of the uh, the sine wave here which has gone very flat but you see if it's full white that gives us full output from this channel and if I was to move it round down to the bottom then that gives us full output from this channel which as we know is quite weak so having it you know, slightly if we can find the right position on the filter there off the bottom you can see the output there is still really swamping what we're getting from this channel so a further solution to that would be to go back into where we're generating that noise and change this filter from non to sine reset it and then we can turn the output down here so it's far more subtle and then now we can see that the effect in here is more subtle so have a look at what the results is and we've mixed a bit of a high frequency noise with the existing pattern coming from the texture and that's disguised that effect a bit but still it's not looking very skin like now I have to consider changing the render mode here so if we go into render options premium effects we'll get our blurred reflection going we'll use true ambience I'll turn the race pixel down so we can preview it and use ambient scattering correction boost light turn the maximum ray depth down to 4 and have a quick look how our skin looks now so that's changed its appearance quite a bit now uh, obviously it slowed the render time down and there's still this consideration over the material setting so I'll go back to this and see whether this is the most appropriate one or whether there's something else I might want to use let's see um, value let's try value the frequency might be a bit high it's mostly picking out something that's going to look acceptable as the, the pores of the uh, of this of your skin let's see oh, I'm just going to check my settings right well what I was looking at before was gradient uh, frequency of about 8000 you can see and not very much output on the bump channel so uh, I'll try the settings that I tried before and then see if that uh, gives us a better result as I say it's a, a bit of a fiddly process and it'll all depend on the lighting in your scene and the scale of the, the model and things like that so it's a bit of trial and error here so we'll give that one a go now see how that looks just trying to pick out something that's going to give the right kind of surface texture so we'll give that a go I'll pull my camera back to its original position Okay, it's not remembered by camera's original position which is annoying and I'll have a look at the, the model from a distance so if that is more or less an appropriate texture the thing to do is to transfer it onto the other components so if we started with the torso selected and we select the face like this so holding the shift key down click on the family for face then go into the material lab you can see it's got the torso material and check out of there and then if we just select face on its own we can go into the material lab into the texture source editor select the face but I once again 
this wants to be the bump map so select the bump map one copy it select the face paste it and then we can put that appropriate channel in there and that will be transferred so Nat will give us now the the texture settings on the face the same as they have on the body uh, repeat this procedure for the arms so with the face selected hold shift key down click limbs go into the material lab and exit then just select limbs on their own go into the material lab texture source editor for this first texture component select the map for the limbs that's the bump map copy that select the limbs and then paste it into this second channel the alpha channel so that should have sorted the limbs out the face and the torso which we set up originally now we need to consider the lighting if we're going to say that these skin settings are appropriate lighting wise we're still in a position where we've got the default bright sky so go into the image based lighting tab here use HDR image open and I'll use this Trevenhall 2 HDR to provide the backdrop it's a, a bit dark and I really want it to be tone mapped because that'll even the light output from it turn the quality down and set the intensity up at 8 set the apply to light source turn the specularity output to nothing HDRI effect I'll put in 20 there but I might turn that up turn off true ambience optimization use it for, for a background add it to the sky light from inside turn cast shadows off include only background the sunlight's been automatically disabled for the sky now I'm going to go to the atmosphere off and set the sky to fully black so we've just got the HDRI backdrop um, uh, projected onto the black background but then we'll be able to see it round the figure here and up to the horizon I can't see much at the moment because things aren't set up this uh, bit of residual lighting is arriving from the HDR but we're going to change that and I don't want to see the background here because I haven't used a high resolution background just low resolution background so from above what I'm going to do is put a cube in it's just in the default grey and I'll slide that so it's uh, behind the figure and then it'll just obscure the backdrop for us obviously the lighting needs to be adjusted still further I'm going to create uh, some obscure lighting using the gel light so if I create a radial light source now I'm going to give it uh, a family, an orange family change its name to background, that's an important step because that will mean it can then be targeted by the image based lighting light from inside edit this, true ambience optimization use gel, include background procedural and then just reset the material to default grey and then I open this up and put it around my scene it will then provide light into the scene if things are set up right so the question is how much light do I need to provide from this to light that background so I'm going to try 500 and see if that significantly increases the amount of light being generated well it has as you can see the lights quite even there's no specular response and there is in here a little bit of a, a gray skull cap so I think I think that might if that's not the scalp is it? I'm not sure I think it might be well I'll just delete it and see if it gets rid of the problem yes it is so I've got rid of the scalp now so for the reflection I'll save this camera position see if it remembers it this time I'll have a look around and uh, the backgrounds there it's cut off by the light source that I've put around everything um, which is this this background now I've had to call it that so it can be targeted by the HDRI lighting so if I want a specular response on the, the figure herself I'll just give that a render then I'm going to need to introduce some more light sources uh, at the moment this um, light from the backdrop is quite blue that I can control the saturation level of that light through there so what's happening is it's lighting from inside it's hitting the inside of that invisible sphere that's providing the light for the trambience light and coming back into the scene and by using light from inside it means that the light output which will be colored by the HDRI lighting will be uh, assigned to the appropriate place 
in her environment so it'll match with what reflections are being provided of a skin which are going to be blurred but which will also see the backdrop so right now the light is less blue because I've reduced the saturation I'll just introduce a couple more lights so I'll create radial light and I'll place it up in one corner like so I see the effect of that so that's going to be clipping across her skin I'm going to change the colour of that light to um, sort of a turquoisey colour oops I didn't do that right I'll use RGB here I'll just cut out the red there you go that's giving it a strong cyan tint and this this will have uh, anisotropic and specular response from the material which was set up so it'll create a slightly different effect on this edge if you see any uh, like facetation the facets of the mesh it becomes facetized I don't know if I've just invented that word or if it exists then that is a mesh smoothing issue in Bryce and it's not a lot we can do about that other than to load in a very high resolution model I'll provide another light source so I'll create another radial light these are just standard lights and uh, if I have these close to the surface of this outer light that's the background uh, they will also react with that and provide some trambient light from themselves that's been converted from their diffuse light so I'll edit this light, I'll make this a sort of a orangey colour and so that'll complement the the blue light from that side uh, at the moment mm, you can see here the shadows are quite sharp from these light sources so it'd be nice if they were softened so I'll, I'll soften the shadow from that one and select this light source edit and uh, soften the shadow from that one don't need to worry about the background lighting because that isn't providing any direct light these are the only two direct lights in this scene since the bright sun was disabled when I introduced the HDRI backdrop uh, to get those shadows to soften you must remember to turn on soft shadows in the uh, premium effects otherwise it'll have no effect so now we've got our soft shadows we've got our general lighting and we've got our um, two light sources that are helping bring out the specular in the the texture response of the model now it won't really be very obvious what the reflection is contributing to this effect but if it isn't there think it the, the, the skin looks a lot flatter so all these settings obviously are to subject to review depending on the lighting environment that you put your figure in so I've tried these out and they seem to work in this environment there are probably better settings because I've not experimented with it a great deal but I have got to a stage now well, bear in mind where we started from which was very very shiny that she's looking a bit better like I say a bit better still if we had subsurface scattering but uh, uh, as things stand, I'll just uh, set this up now. If we render with the highest raised pixel available, which is 256, because that'll help us sort this noise problem out. That's uh, as a result of using the true ambience. Uh, obviously, the direct lights help that, but, but at the same time, because the direct lights require a lot of extra calculation for shadow casting, then they tend to slow the render time down. So the more direct lights you introduce with the true ambient scene, well, you'll reduce the amount of noise, but you'll increase the render time. If we could light it just with true ambience, which is possible, but you wouldn't have these nice uh, highlight areas and, uh, and you wouldn't have specular response within the material, then the render time would be uh, considerably reduced. But there you go. Another thing you can do, as you can see this is going to take an, an hour to render, because we went to the trouble of taking the ambient response out of all the materials in the scene if we go to background and edit the material we can put ambient response in here and we could go to the Skylab and then we see we've got the ambient colour here so we could drive this directly from this ambient channel since I've not got any uh, well, let's see what's the colour we've not got in this scene oh, I suppose red's fairly close it's a bit close to the orange if I go to the Skylab and just quickly knock off the HDRI effect then and then I'll choose I was, but I was having that on red wasn't I then as an alternative you can provide 
general lighting without any direction from from the ambient channel or mix that with the HDRI image backdrop but the point is it's still about an hour render time so there's no great overhead in lighting using this HDRI backdrop in this approach because only it's only linked into the background and it's not casting any shadows and it's the shadow casting aspect of these direct light sources that really increases the render time so if we wanted to warm up the light and we couldn't get enough through the and of the red color from the the backdrop here from the HDRI then you can do it through the ambient channel and if you only need a bit then you just set it down so you could set that to slightly red and that would provide a bit more red light general light in the scene from the backdrop as well as the light that's provided through the HDRI settings being projected inside it so now you can see like an render time of about an hour at this rate so it's going to take a little while to render out so at this point I'll pause the video then we'll have a look at the results and consider you know where things might be improved as things stand then you're not going to be convinced that this is a real person but on the plus side she doesn't look creepily like a corpse either which is the bit of a risk if you uh, get the skin looking very realistic but not sufficiently realistic to fool you to thinking that you're looking at a human um, this is something called the uncanny valley and you can uh, I'll put a link in fact on the description to the video uh, so that you can you can have a look at that it's quite an interesting idea so not terribly realistic but uh, not not unpleasant to look at a uh, lighting uh, simulation in the shadow regions is good thanks to the true ambience effect we've got a uh, specular response on the skin you can see uh, that the mesh resolution here on the outside these are a little bit angular there and also there's some spillover on these edges so you can see here there's a there's an ugly shadow and quite a sharp edge there this is all down to the mesh resolution so if you can light the figure completely with trambient lighting that's very general then you'll lose that issue but then again you won't have these specular highlights that are a result of the specular component of the light source uh, responding to the specular of the material that's used again like I said though the balance of the materials is very much dependent also on what you're trying to do with the lighting so if you have no specular in your lighting there's no point in developing the specular in the material the anisotropy is uh, also uh, because of the blurred reflections taking effect so that will be stretching out some of the reflections according to the anisotropic effect which here makes the skin look a little bit shiny uh, perhaps that's a, a bit too extreme so again I might consider changing the specular settings there the thing to do is to identify a part of the model which has got sufficient changes in geometry and picks up uh, all the lighting in your scene and just plop render a small area to try and assess the state of the material and then make small changes the small changes make quite a big difference to our perception when we're looking at skin because it's something that we're very good at recognizing uh, because we see humans all day long we're very critical about the appearance of human figures in renders and can soon detect when we're not looking at a real human hence uh, uh, the uncanny valley which uh, say is worth a read if you're interested in trying to achieve photorealism with your figures uh, say if you're trying to achieve that in Bryce then you'll have to put a lot of effort in to simulate the surface scattering effect and possibly have to render several different renders with different material settings and then combine them in post work but that's getting a bit ahead of ourselves yet um, I'm still looking into that and uh, I'll try and produce a tutorial at this point when I think I can grasp the concepts myself but this is as far as I've got so far so um, I hope that uh, is an interesting tutorial and that you'll have a go at doing this and you'll experiment with your own skin settings with models that you've imported over the bridge from Dust Studio. Okay, that's the end of the tutorial.